Do you ever use a sponge for painting? Well, today's video is specifically for beginners to show you how simple it is to produce a sunset painting with a sponge coming up. Hi again there guys, I'm here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design. And in today's video, it's really focusing on those beginners who just really struggle trying to blend paint and showing you how simple these techniques can be. So I've already pre-primed the canvas just with white gesso and now you can see I've actually cut my sponge in half just to make it a little bit more uh, usable. And now I'm just taking some streaks of yellow. The trick to this, guys, is to work quite quickly. So I'm not pushing down very hard because I want to keep those lovely streaky effects going on. But you'll notice, importantly, that white in the middle is key because that's the lightest part of the sunset and we don't want to overpaint this canvas. So straight on now with the, uh, the warm red. So again, just titivating the canvas, just gently working the sponge across. If I push down too hard too quickly, I'm just going to make the whole thing look like mud. It will just blend in too much. And what I'm trying to do with this first painting is to actually have a bit more of an impressionist feel. So you really get to see those lovely individual marks. I guess it's just a more dramatic sunset as opposed to a very subtle sunset, which I'm going to do for the second one. So you can already see straight away, it almost looks like a sunset straight off. It's that simple and it's that quick. The other beauty uh, or the, the wonderful element with using sponges is you get these really quick straight lines. It's one of the elements that a lot of people struggle with when they're using a brush because we generally paint with like a rainbow wrist. Using a sponge just really helps to get those nice straight strokes. So I'm just exaggerating with a little bit more of the red pigment now just to really highlight some of those darker um, just more of a contrast. Painting's all about that gorgeous sense of contrast going from those light to dark areas. So it's just giving that sky a bit more of a dramatic feel. But notice how I've still got some of the yellow underneath. And if you do feel that you've lost some of that yellow, well, of course, I've just gone on with a little hint of that yellow onto the brush right now. Now, I do want there to be a contrast. I want the ocean to be a little bit more subtle. Whereas I want the sky to have that really dramatic sunset feel to it. So I'm just using the flat edge now of the sponge and very gently stroking the wrist across just to make those colours blend in a little bit more subtly. Now here we're just going straight on with the white acrylic. I've actually changed over the sponge. One thing with the sponge is it's really hard to clean. So I tend to have two or three to hand so I can just work quite quickly. So this is a clean sponge now so that I get that lovely fresh clean white coming across. So I've just done the reflection of the sun. There's that, that feature that you see in the middle. It's almost like a, a whirlpool, I guess. Just dotting on the paint where it's getting slightly smaller towards the bottom. And now I'm just dragging some of those lines across just where you get that reflection going into the water. This has been painted in real time, guys. So this hasn't dried in the background at all, but that's why it's really important that you don't push down too hard just barely touching the canvas but with lots of thick paint with the white because we obviously want that to stand out a little bit more. You don't want to overdo the white here as well guys because if you do you're just going to take away all that lovely colour that you've put in initially and then I'm just going to finish off with the very corner of the sponge to put in the actual sun so it's just again a white blob in the middle. Now as I mentioned earlier, these are brilliant when it comes to doing straight lines. So I'm just using the top edge of the sponge and I've just put a tiny hint of red. This enables us now to do a really quick horizon line uh, just to give a bit more definition to the painting. So I'm just dabbing those lines across. Now obviously it's going to be a bit tricky here because the, the white sun, as it were, is super thick. So obviously that's still wet. So you just want to be careful that you don't pick any of that extra white up. Now again, we were talking about the drama before. It always is a bit scary when you add black. I've barely got any black on my sponge. It's just to give a little bit more depth to the quality of that red at the top. So I, as you can see, just touching on. At first it looks scary because it looks like you've made a mistake, but we're we going to blend this in in a moment just with those lovely strokes going across. And if you feel that you've got too much black, you don't want this to go muddy, you don't want it to go brown. So just put a bit more red onto your sponge just before you start to very gently stroke those sponge strokes across. So 
So it really is a case of just touching ever so slightly the sponge onto that canvas because you don't want to undo all that fabulous work that you did previously with those gorgeous colours in the background. So now I'm just using a clean edge just to drag a little hint of that red into the yellow so it didn't seem quite so, so obvious. And then just to mirror that darker tone of red in the sky, we're just putting a very subtle hint through the ocean at the bottom as well. And again, it, you, you want to be so careful, you know, just literally titivating it. That is, that's the key word for this painting because you want the brush to do the work. So you're just very gently dragging some of those strokes across. And because your paint is already wet, that's where the blending is so much easier. If you let this dry, you'd almost have to rework the whole thing again. The reason paint is blending so easily for me is because all the pigment is currently wet. And of course, that's where the advantage of doing the gesso as well in the background. Not only do you stop the uh, the paint from absorbing too quickly into the canvas, but you give yourself a really nice base background. And it's one of the things that most beginners struggle with. They're not actually priming the canvas before they start painting. Just finishing off there, just making that horizon line a little bit straighter. And there you have it. It's that simple, barely five minutes and a pretty effective sunset painting. Now we're going to contrast this with a very different style. So again, very similar technique to start with. So again, I've gone with the new sponge obviously so that I get that lovely clean yellow color. The approach to this next sunset is to go for much more of a realistic, isn't it probably the wrong word, more of a very subtle change of color. So whereas the first painting was much more impressionistic where you get those gorgeous individual I was going to say brush strokes, sponge strokes coming through the painting. This painting is going to be really subtle. So hence why I'm dabbing the red on just in sections because of course I don't want to overdo the red. The red, just as the black was with the first painting, is going to be overpowering. So just be careful guys that you don't overdo that red. But you can see straight away it's turning into more of a pink because of course again I've got the wet pre-primed canvas in the background. So very similar this time in terms of the technique. Again, that keyword, titivating. I'm barely touching the canvas and I still want to have that very subtle, yellowy, whitish kind of horizon line just where the, uh, the sun would have gone. Just gonna add a little bit more yellow into here because I've lost some of that initial color. So again, switch over the sponge. Just go with a nice clean sponge to start with because you're going to pick up some of those red pieces of pigment as I'm dragging this through. So there, it's much better in terms of the, uh, the, the striking dynamic colors you're getting in there. So generally, as a rule of thumb, you want to go from red at the top into the yellow, very subtly into the white, yellow back down into the red at the bottom. But of course, they're all going to be a, like an opaque version of those colors because you're mixing in that white in the background. If I hadn't pre-primed this, or if I didn't have the primer wet, this would be a lot more difficult and the colors would be much stronger, which is not really what I'm going for here. I want this to be a very subtle sunset effect. It's very therapeutic as well. It's one of those where you can just keep working the colors and if you don't like it, ultimately worst case scenario, you let it dry, you start again. But this is coming out pretty nicely. So you get that really gorgeous orange going into yellow in the middle. Just that lovely striking sunset effect. But you can see the biggest difference here where you're really getting a very subtle, gradual change of color. I'm just gonna finish off by putting a little hint of that white through because I have lost a bit of that definition. And it will really just give that lovely highlighted effect in the middle. If you have enjoyed today's video guys, do please hit that like button and the subscription button. It really does help our channel if you do hit those like buttons. We do upload weekly videos. I apologize to my regular viewers. It's been a little bit slow of late just because life in Perth has been very busy. We haven't really slowed down with coronavirus, but hopefully back to our normal schedules now. So there you have the two paintings guys, side by side. Obviously you can see the completely different approach, but a really simple way to get beginners painting sunsets. We'll see you next time. Happy painting. Happy painting.